to talk to you about the social brain. What happens in the brain when we connect with other people? What happens in the brain when we make engagement and connection and a positive connection with other people is different from when it's not so positive and not so much of an engagement. In fact, it's all a bit of a hassle, actually. So the thing that people talk to me about when I talk to them about how do we respond to other people, they go, oh, yeah, 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 that's that flight, fright and freeze thing. And I go, yeah. I said, actually, it's got another one called approach. And that system, that whole system, which a lot of people are really aware of and it's really great, is what's called the sympathetic nervous system. And it's what happens to you when you are feeling there is a threat, there's a danger, there's something to be concerned about. And so the concentration and the thinking hones in on the situation, determines whether it's something to fight, it's a danger, to fly away from, to run away from because it's too much of a danger, to freeze because you're not quite sure and you want to make sure it's okay, or maybe it's okay and you approach it. Now this is a very useful system, but it's a system of focus and it's limited. We have an entirely separate system that is devoted to social connection. And this was really espoused most eloquently by a, a great colleague of mine named Stephen Porges, and it's called the polyvagal theory. For those of you that are really interested, just look him up, P-O-R-G-E-S, go to Google and look at the polyvagal theory. It's fabulous. You can go as deep as you want into the techn technicalities of it. But the thing I want to share with you, which is so beautiful in just making it clear to us about social connection. And here, look, I want to show you. We have a series of muscles and activities in the brain that connect to the nerves in the face and just around the shoulders and the neck, which are all about these particular connections and these particular ways in which we socially engage. Now, when you're in that sympathetic nervous system, that sympathetic nervous system, it kind of grabs you and forces you. It kind of controls you because it's trying to save you from getting eaten by the saber-toothed tiger. When you're in this socially engaged state, which is much newer, and as soon as you get a threat or a distress, uh, you immediately snap out of that socially engaged and go into the sympathetic system. In that socially engaged system, particular muscles come online. They start working on your face, and they don't work in the sympathetic system. And in the socially engaged system, they are the muscles around the cheeks here, which lift your cheeks and enable you to smile. They're the muscles around the eyelid, which enable you to open your eyes and look at the person that you're wanting to be talking to. They're muscles that also occur around the throat and in the voice. And that enables you to have what we call sonorific voice, meaning just voice that goes up and down. And then also in the shoulders. So the shoulders and the neck, so you move, and that's where we get gesture. And you know how we talk about communication is 80% is, uh, nonverbal and 20% verbal? It's all these things which are a part of that verbal and nonverbal approach. Now, here's the one that just is the kicker for me every time. In your ears, there is a muscle called the stapedius muscle, and it is actioned on by the brain when you're in the stress and you're focusing and you've got real problems and you're worried, it actually changes the eardrums to hear low sounds like footfalls and growls from the saber-toothed tiger or high squeech, screechy pitched things. And when you're in the socially engaged mode, this muscle opens up to the sound of human speech. So we are actually designed when we are connected with someone, when we are engaged, when we are able to connect our brains to create this across the social synapse we call, we do it with our ears and our shape and our feelings. Now, when those muscles and those things go down and you get very tense and you speak in this way, you're either somebody who's very cranky, but more often than not, if the eyes go down, suddenly, clearly, this is someone in depression. This is someone whose mood is down. So you lift it and we're able to see that. So what do you need to do? When you're feeling down, first of all, you can tell 
because you've got all these muscles not working. That's how you know you're feeling stressed and you're focused rather than this open and connected sense. The other one is you can simply activate a lot of these muscles and those muscles will send a message back into your brain to open you up and to get you feel more connected. Essentially, if you laugh, it eventually becomes laughter and it eventually becomes fun and you eventually will let go. So when you're depressed, when you're feeling down, when you can't make decisions, when your brain is at fight, flight and fear, just do something pleasant. Go out and look at something nice. Lift your eyes, open your throat, laugh, have a giggle, be nice with someone and your creativity will suddenly jump back into gear.